Now you may have noticed in some of these shots, the Falcon 9 booster supporting today's mo mission is covered in quite a bit of soot, and that is because it previously supported NASA Crew 5, GPS 3, Space Vehicle 6, Inmarsat 6F2, and one Starlink mission. And you can see that strong back slowly reclining away from the vehicle. Stage one, locks load is complete. This launch will bring about 7,000 pounds of hardware, crew supplies, and science to the space station. One research project will study the effects of space on human DNA. Another will study the effects on plant DNA. Findings from both could help us advance things here on Earth, but also prepare us for future, farther missions into space. And Dragon will be docked to the space station for about a month before returning home. Now checkouts of the second stage thrust vector control actuators are now underway. This is often referred to as an engine wiggle test. This is when SpaceX moves the thrust nozzles slightly to make sure the guidance hardware is ready for flight. SpaceX will do the exact same test on the first stage engines, but that happens just seconds before ignition. Dragon is also performing its final health checks to make sure all of the vehicle's primary systems are ready stage for its two, lock load with is the complete. International Space Station. Dragon is and there's that call-out that stage two lock call out that stage two locks loading is complete. That wraps up propellant loading for both stages of the Falcon 9. And as I mentioned earlier, you may have seen those white clouds around the vehicle. Ground gas those close clouds up. you see are the chilled gas above the LOX tank liquid surface that we vent overboard. And when that gas comes out in contact with the warm Florida air, the air condenses into clouds and water. Now Dragon is about to transition into internal power. Also Falcon 9 uh, computers will then enter startup mode, which is when the Falcon 9 flight computers take control of the countdown, guiding the rocket through the last seconds before liftoff. You should hear a call out about startup shortly. Falcon 9 is in startup. Dragon is in countdown. Both stages are now pressurizing for launch. At T-minus 45 seconds, we'll hear the SpaceX launch director verify go for launch. Go for launch. There you go. And at launch, the International Space Station will be flying 260 miles over the North Atlantic, south of St. John's, Newfoundland. T-minus 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds. T minus ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition, engine full power, and lift off of PRS twenty eight. Go Falcon, go Dragon. Lift off of about seven thousand pounds of science and cargo including a new pair of solar arrays to boost power on the space station. the call out for max q coming up next are three events back to back the first of which is main engine cutoff or miko and this is when all nine merlin 1d engines on the first stage shut down
after those nine engines shut down, the first and second stages will separate, and this is also called out over the nets as stage separation. From there, the second stage will ignite its Merlin vacuum engine to boost drag into low Earth orbit during SES, or second engine start one. And this whole sequence takes about 15 seconds. Should be expecting that call out for main engine cutoff in about 40 seconds from now. Some amazing views of our Falcon 9 vehicle as it takes our Dragon spacecraft to orbit. And in just about 10 seconds, we should see that main engine cut off. Nico? Stage separation. In that ignition. And there you heard those callouts and probably saw on your screen main engine cutoff, followed by stage separation, and then second engine start one. As I mentioned earlier, we are flying an MVAC nozzle, uh, a shortened MVAC nozzle on our second stage. If you're just tuning in, you're watching a live webcast for the 28th commercial resupply mission to the International Space Station for NASA. This is SpaceX's 38th mission for 2023 and the fourth Dragon flight to the International Space Station this year. We lifted off from Kennedy Space Center's historic launch complex 39A just about three and a half minutes ago. Now on your screen, on the left side, you can see our Falcon 9 first stage, which is going to uh, descend back towards Earth, and the second stage on the right side of your screen, which is carrying the Dragon spacecraft. Now, as a reminder, today's mission I marks the fifth flight for this Falcon 9 booster. Falcon 9 booster, which previously supported the Crew-5, GPS-3, Space Vehicle-6, Inmarsat 6F2, and one Starlink mission. In order to make its way back to our drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas, the Falcon 9 first stage has two more burns to execute. The first is the entry burn, where three of the Merlin engines will reignite. This helps slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. The entry burn is followed by the landing burn, and this is a single engine burn that brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on the drone ship. Now, occasionally with the Falcon 9 first stage on the left side of your screen, you may see some Both small white puffs, and those are nitrogen gas bursts that are used for attitude control. You can also see there on your screen a pair of the hypersonic grid fins. Falcon 9 is equipped with four of these grid fins, which are comprised of titanium, and they are positioned near the top of the first stage. Once in the atmosphere, stage one is only using the grid fins for steering as it makes its return to Earth. And these grid fins orient the rocket during re-entry and guide the rocket during its descent. Now, the Falcon 9 first stage has nine Merlin 1D engines, and, and each engine generates about 192,000 pounds of thrust. On the second stage is the MVAC engine, which has a slightly wider nozzle, and, that, uh, and the vacuum engine generates about 203,000 pounds of thrust. Next major milestone is going to be the first stage entry burn, which will take place just over a minute from now. There you can see an amazing view of our stage two with its shortened MVAC nozzle. The Falcon 9 first stage, which is not currently on your screen, has reached Apogee and is now beginning its descent back towards Earth. The second stage is continuing to take our Dragon spacecraft to orbit. Now 
and we should see that first stage entry burn begin in about 15 seconds from now on the left side of your screen. One FTS has saved. Stage one entry the burn second startup. stage on the right side of your screen. And there's that call out for stage one entry burn startup on the left side of your screen. The second stage is continuing to take our Dragon spacecraft to orbit. Now again, the entry burn is the first of two burns that the Falcon 9 booster performs before landing on our drone ship. Stage one entry burn shut down. And there's that confirmation of stage one entry burn shutdown. As we get closer to first stage landing, it's good to note that the Falcon 9 first stage is equipped with four landing legs made of state-of-the-art carbon fiber with aluminum honeycomb. These landing legs are placed symmetrically around the base of the rocket and deployed just prior to landing. And if successful, this landing will mark the 198th time that we've recovered a first stage booster, including both Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy missions. We are about 25 seconds away from that landing burn beginning. Stage one transonic. Now, as the rocket descends through the Earth's atmosphere, this really puts deceleration into perspective. In the span of less than a minute, we'll have reduced from twice the speed of a jet all the way down to zero as the rocket lands. And as Falcon lands, we may also hear a call out that the second engine will shut off around the same time. Stage one landing burn. Landing link deploy. Stage one landing burn. <laughs> and and there you have it, the Falcon 9 first stage that supported today's mission has landed for its fifth time, having previously supported Crew-5, GPS-3, Space Vehicle-6, Inmarsat 6F2, and a Starlink mission. Today's landing also marks the 198th successful landing for an orbital class rocket. You may have also heard confirmation of good orbit. Acquisition signal, New Finland. At T plus nine minutes and 30 seconds into the mission, we are coming up on the last major task for stage two, commanding separation of Dragon a couple minutes from now. And we expect to have video of Dragon separation from the top of the second stage, which looks into the trunk. CRS-28 will be joining the Crew-6 vehicle currently on orbit, so we'll be back to having two Dragon spacecraft, two Dragon spacecraft docked at the International Space Station. As for cargo, today we will be delivering more than 7,000 pounds of science, research, crew supplies, and vehicle hardware to the orbital laboratory and its crew. To date, SpaceX has sent and brought back over 280,000 pounds of crew and cargo to and from the space station. And we should be seeing Dragon separation about a minute and a half from now. As a reminder, this is the fourth flight for this Dragon capsule, having previously supported CRS-21, CRS-23, and CRS-25 to the space station. Today's flight also marks the 20th reuse of a Dragon vehicle overall. Now, Dragon has 16 Draco thrusters on board, each with the capability to deliver 90 pounds of force. There are four pairs of three thrusters spaced evenly around the capsule, as well as four forward bulkhead thrusters underneath the nose cone. Now, notably, today's Dragon does not have super Draco thrusters, seats, or life support systems, as it's not carrying crew. And this saves on weight and space, and also allows for a faster refurbishment time.
While initial designs of Dragon carried solar arrays extended outward from the trunk, the cylindrical structure located directly behind the Dragon capsule, the current Dragon has these arrays fixed directly to the trunk. And you may see at some point both a light and a dark side of the trunk, and that dark side is actually those solar panels, while the light side is a radiator to help cool the spacecraft. And speaking of solar panels, uh, you can see on your screen right now the solar panels that we will install on the International Space Station. Once the Dragon capsule reaches the ISS, it will be able to autonomously dock using its navigation sensors, centerline camera, and light detection and ranging or LIDAR equipment. And there you can see on your screen Dragon separating from the second stage. Well, that's going to do it for me here in Hawthorne. Dragon the separation next confirmed. milestone coming up is the is the Dragon Nose Cone opening sequence, which Switch protects the double ring and navigational sensors. And I'll toss it over to Shaniqua in Houston to talk us through it. Shaniqua? Thanks, Zach. Everything is still going well back here in Mission Control Houston. Right after Dragon separated, it began a series of automatic checkouts, including small firings of the Draco maneuvering thrusters. The next milestone is nose cone deploy. The nose cone protects that docking hardware and rendezvous and tracking elements on top of Dragon during a sit. The nose cone deploy uncovers the four forward bulkhead thrusters, which Dragon will use for its major burn maneuvers. And we do have confirmation that that nose cone deploy sequence has begun. Again, major burn maneuvers will be Dragon nose cone deploy co uncovers those uh, major hardware. It will also uncover Dragon eyes, that rendezvous and tracking hardware that allows Dragon to know where it is in space and how to find the space station. Once open, the nose cone will stay in that position until the very end of its mission, closing prior to re-entry to provide some of that additional protection to the same hardware during re-entry. It does take about five minutes for a nose cone to open. We are looking for 12 hooks, two sets of six that will open here. And once open, we will see the nose cone deploy. Again, that sequence has begun, and we'll be waiting to hear once all 12 hooks are open. And we will see movement of the nose cone as all 12 hooks open. After nose cone deploy is, Cargo Dragon will be safely on its way to the International Space Station. If you're just joining us, NASA and SpaceX's 28th commercial resupply mission launched from Pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida at 10.47 a.m. Central Time, 11.47 a.m. Eastern Time, and is currently in orbit. We're standing by now for nose cone deploy. Dragon is filled with over 7,000 pounds of cargo and supplies, including a variety of science investigations, hardware, and fresh foods for the crew on station. Some of those fresh foods that will be delivered include apples, grapefruits, oranges, cherry tomatoes, and blueberries. Dragon will dock to the Zenith or space facing side of the Harmony module, just recently freed up by Dragon Freedom, which brought up the Axiom 2 crew. The Axiom 2 crew aboard the SpaceX Dragon Freedom spacecraft safely splashed down off the coast of Florida at 10.04 p.m. Central Time, 11.04 p.m. Eastern on May 30th, 2023. The crew's return officially concluded the second all-private astronaut mission to the International Space Station. Axiom-2 commander and retired NASA astronaut Peggy Whitson ended her eight-day mission with a new record of 675 days in space, the most of any American or woman. And while we're discussing records, NASA astronaut Frank Rubio will end his mission this fall, breaking a record of his own. Rubio will return to Earth aboard a Russian Soyuz spacecraft no earlier than September 27th, and in his stay aboard the Orbiting Laboratory, having logged a total of at least 371 days in orbit. <laughs> 